Hey, we made it. So it's the also episode 33 of the Nerdy Cool Dad podcast. So, uh, yeah, weekend ahead of us. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be, uh, well, the weather's going to be shitty, but uh, I've got some projects I want to do and do some relaxing. So, still looking forward to it regardless, right? Uh, yeah, I've got a, I've got a fantastic show for you guys today, or people in general. Uh, yeah, <laughs> again, I don't want to... I'm not going to get into politics again, and hopefully this can be kind of my new shtick. I'm sort of over it, um, as I mentioned yesterday, and uh, almost everyone I've talked to seems to be over it as well, for the most part. Uh, we've You can only take in so many uh, political issues or, or stories before you just, you just don't give a shit anymore and you just want to get on with life. So here we are. Uh, instead, I've got some other cool things that uh, that I want to talk, uh, talk about. So... Uh, I've been listening to a lot of different uh, experts online uh, through YouTube and, and what have you. Um, you know, I'll form my own opinion about things, but it's good to to, to listen to influencers and see what their uh, their sort of reasoning and logic is, right? Uh, so one of the things I was listening to yesterday, I honestly can't even remember who the hell it was, but uh, the argument was that uh, you know, overall, regardless of how all, all these things pan out, that young people are going to continue to move to cities. Um, I mean, you know, even before I get into all of that, this is really talking about, uh, or what I'm focusing on today for the most part is uh, what things are going to look like after COVID-19. I, as I've said many times before, uh, this is changing our behavior overall. This is not like a temporary thing. Uh, some things might get back to what we consider normal at some point, but uh, I think we're going to be writing a new normal. We're going to be looking at this uh, incident. We're going to be referring back to it over and over and over again. And it just give you an, uh, an idea, like I think it was 2004 maybe in Ontario in New York uh, State, we had this massive blackout. Uh, and that only lasted for like 24 hours, and that was like the bee's knees at the time. We talked about that. I still remember it. It was like a, it was a pretty big deal. We all actually had a pretty fun uh, time until everything opened up the next day, and the gas station lines were insane. And uh, then everyone started buying generators and hoarding gas, only because we've never had another blackout since. So uh, this is a little bit different, a little bit more extreme, I'd say. But anyways. What I was getting at, uh, back to my main point, was, uh, you know, young people uh, will continue to move to the cities after uh, COVID. Uh, and to a certain extent, you know, pricing is insane. Um, you know, to live in a, a major city in Canada, the United States, uh, is super expensive, at least in the, in the, in the, the big cities. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know how sustainable that is unless you're willing to get into a four bedroom, uh, house or apartment, uh, which is, you know, likely, uh, what you'd have to do. Then it's kind of like, let's just assume you, you went to, you know, post-secondary school, uh, and then you graduate and then, uh, you get out of the school life into the real world, uh, only kind of living like you're in a dorm or something again, that's kind of what's going on. And then as you, as you grow your career and make more money, then you have more options, of course. Right. Um, but, uh, what people don't talk about is how technology is affecting where people live. So I'm a prime candidate for this sort of thing. I'm in my early 30s and, uh, you know, if I had the option, I wouldn't live close to, close, as close to the city as I do. Uh, I mean, there's some conveniences that come with it, but if I had the, the opportunity, I'd be living on a lake in like cottage country all year round if I could, uh, within reason, you know, maybe in like an hour, hour and a half away from Toronto or, or a big city would be my, my personal preference preference uh, because I like the leisure activities I like to get out and go fishing and hiking and things like that uh, have a bit more land but the only thing that holds me back is my ability to be connected to the world uh, via internet um, internet uh, infrastructure in Ontario is horrible in my opinion um, I was lucky lucky enough to spend some time in uh, British Columbia spent a year and a half there and one thing that I can note is, uh, you know, everything's more sparsely po uh, um, uh, populated there. I mean, obviously you have Vancouver, the big cities, uh, and any, any the greater Vancouver area. But I noticed that even when I went as far as, uh, you know, Osoyoos, for example, they had high speed internet there, fiber optics, you know, and that was kind of like a place in the middle of nowhere and like a desert. So 
Um, what I've noticed in Ontario is that uh, you know you got your you got your Bell and your Rogers and uh, um, they 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 run the show. Let's be honest, right? And uh, if it's not in their interest to install proper infrastructure, then they're not going to do it. They hold all the cards, and no one else is going in there. And the other options is like uh, you know you have your inter your your satellite internet, uh, your um, you know whatever you can get through cell phone signals, stuff like that. It's very limited, uh, and it's expensive and it's shitty. So as soon as these problems are figured out, more and more people are going to move away from the city, in my opinion. Um, so, I mean, it's yet to be seen. I mean, uh, when you're young, you, yeah, you like to party, you like to be uh, in a lively atmosphere. And this is not for everyone, of course, right? There's going to be lots of people that are, are lifers in the city. They couldn't imagine not living in the city. Uh, but it sort of brings me to another point is a lot of people who are in the city all the time because that's where they work, obviously. That's where the jobs are. And, um, you know, with this whole COVID-19 thing, like, Companies are not going to be able to just cram everyone into an office. Like I couldn't tell you the amount of jobs I've had where I'm in a, I'm in a very crammed space. Um, you know, just rows of desks. No one gets cubicles, or at least I didn't get cubicles. I, I've been to some big tech companies. Like I've checked out offices at uh, like Shopify, for example. And you might as well have people stacked on top of each other because you have no room to work. You're so crammed. They put so many people in these offices. And, uh, you know, they, they come across as more, way more glamorous than they actually are. Um, so, I don't know, people working from home right now and companies saying, seeing this as a more valuable option, um, it's, 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 very, it's very interesting, right? I mean, this is, uh, this is the way the future, the way it is right now. And I can't see it changing as much, even if you have uh, consistently on a Friday, for example. Sorry, my head is cut off a little here. Let me fix this camera angle here. All right, that's a little bit better. All right, perfect. Uh, yeah, uh, what the hell was I even talking about? Uh, but yeah, I, it, I just find that uh, the way people are gonna be working going forward is, is gonna be completely different. As I've mentioned before, I'm a remote worker. I'm used to it um, and um, I haven't noticed a difference at all, obviously, because I am a remote worker. But I'm going to take advantage of that. And uh, if I choose to, down the road, move a little further away from the city to, to have more land, to have a, a bigger property, uh, anything like that, um, I'm going to totally take advantage of that. Even, you know, if I start my own company or things like that, I can I can operate as I need to. Uh, these face-to-face -face meetings that people waste time doing all the time, are, it's just a waste in, in general. Uh, you can use Zoom meetings. You can use any other software that allows you to do telecom or, or do like a video conferencing uh, with screen sharing and uh, you know um, even things like DocuSign. It our, our lives are a lot easier. We don't have to be wasting all this time. Not mention driving to people's houses and or or offices like. One thing I always found was so annoying was uh, when I was working in the automotive industry, it was constantly face-to-face -face meetings. You know, you got to drive out there and waste resources and waste time doing this. It's because they really preferred the old school face-to-face uh, -face conversations. And regardless if that's what you prefer, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of resources. And we got to stop doing things like this because... Um, yeah, for all those reasons I just listed. Uh, do, you know, we're worried about carbon emissions and things like that. Uh, we can cut back on this big time by just being more efficient and not worrying about how we did things in the past or this is this is how I prefer it. We need to shake hands and face-to-face -face meetings. Fuck that. I don't have time for that anymore. So uh, it is what it is. I mean, the, the, there's, a, there's a time and place for that sort of uh, uh, engagement. Um, but... We're, we're finding this less and less uh, needed these days. So I'm personally looking forward to see how things pan out. I think it's going to be for the better. And uh, yeah, I just, uh, I think it's going to be super interesting when there's not going to be as many people crammed into an office, um, doing their regular uh, routine and uh, spreading things out a bit more. Maybe companies will have, um, you know, invest more in like meeting spaces or, or having offices more so for C-suite or, or things that are really necessary to be in the office or if it's a high security protocol, maybe you have your engineering and dev teams there, what have you. But uh, I think they're going to really cut back, spend more money on doing retreats with your company or doing like your, uh, your quarterly meetings and making a big deal about it and spending money on that instead of wasting it all on these giant offices. I, I just... Uh, 
I don't know. It is what it is. And I keep saying that seems to be my coin phrase and <laughs> a friend of mine pointed it out. And I didn't realize I say it. So now I'm going to start saying it more, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's I think it's super interesting to see uh, see how things progress. Uh, one of the issues, and I, I have mentioned this before, in the tech industry, you have people are so entitled like if they don't get their their meals uh every day if they don't have their social events and and retreats and all that kind of stuff i mean uh in some ways it's a way it, it, it's a way for the company to save on wages uh, if you keep people happy through these other things like a foosball table or or, or beer cart fridays stuff like that then they're more likely to stick around and have more of a social aspect um yeah it does build morale but uh, i think uh, i think everyone's become really way too accustomed to it and i think there's better ways in my opinion uh to spend that money but it's already kind of been done it's like well this company gives us this on fridays or this company gives us a credit of that it's like why don't you just pay me more money i'll do my own fucking thing right uh but that's just my opinion right uh working in the tech industry for the last like five years so uh yeah moving on uh other things that I think are going to be hugely impacted by COVID-19, we're already seeing it, is the retail landscape. Um, I hate malls. I'll say that right off the bat. Like, I would rather do just about anything than go to a mall. Uh, my only other... Actually, I would... I'm going to throw this out there. I hate malls more than I hate going to Ikea. And that says a lot. Because I fucking hate going to Ikea. The only thing that gets me to go to Ikea is the food. Uh, they're pretty good food and... Yeah, I don't mind that. Uh, but it's just like, it's so crammed in an Ikea. You have to go in a certain direction. The carts move in like weird fucking directions. The, all the all the wheels turn. I don't get it. It drives me insane. There's people everywhere. No one pays attention. They got this line. You can't get out of the damn maze. And then by the time you get out of the maze, you're in this big warehouse. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, malls. I hate them. Uh... <laughs> Mostly because, like, I don't even know any of these stores. Now, maybe I'm just old-fashioned, perhaps, and uh, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what a Jack and Jones even is or what they sell. Uh, but I did work at uh, close to a mall recently. Uh, my last job uh, was in an office tower that was attached to the Eaton Center in Toronto. So, you know, naturally I went down to the food court a lot and things like that. And I walked through the mall and I don't know what any of these stores are, what they sell. And even if that, like, I don't know, like, when I need something, I'll buy it. If it, it, instead of going to a mall, I'll go to like a Winners or a Marshalls or something like that. Cause I'll find something I need. And if I can't find it there, I'll go to like, I'll order it online. Like most people do. Uh, but you just got to understand what your styles and preferences are. For example, uh, my wife had to get some running shoes. So like the, your typical experience of going to, uh, let's say a sport check, for example, uh, is not something you could do right now, but you need the running shoes. So what do you do? Well, you remember a brand that you really like. So branding is going to be very important because people don't have time to say, okay, well, Adidas shoes fit this way and Nike shoes fit this way and Asics fit this way. Uh, you have to know what, what brand you like and what style of that brand you like, then it's easy. I'm a 10 and a half in this shoe, and this is what I buy. Uh, and it's simple. That's that's all we need to do. There's just, I, I feel like there's way too many choices. Um, and uh, buying online makes that uh, a little bit more simplistic when you know what you're getting yourself into. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, do, I just don't see the, the purpose of a mall. What's going to happen? Like, Especially the small stores at a mall, they can't keep afloat during this whole COVID-19 crisis. What are they going to do? It's it's complete chaos in that regard. Um, like so many of them are going to go under. They're not going to have the cash flow to keep going. Even when malls are open, who the fuck wants to go to a mall? I certainly don't. I, I, I've expressed my, dis <laughs> my distaste for them in general. Um, but uh, I don't know. I just, I just don't see it uh, being a viable option. And you're going to have these giant spaces that are going to be like ghost towns. Like, what are you going to do with it? It's, gonna, uh, it? it's just a huge waste of money, real estate. Um, and I just, I don't know. The, the shopping experience of going to a mall is, to me, ridiculous. And not to mention, the outside is chaotic too. Finding a parking spot just to go in and you got to walk a big loop around the mall and go back where you came from. And what if you all of a sudden want to go to a specific store and it's on the other side of the mall and you already missed it? And <sighs> Breathe. Breathe. Okay. Obviously, I don't like malls. But 
Um, it's, it's, I don't know. It's what actually it's interesting. Um, if anyone's watched like season three of Stranger Things, um, they spend a lot of time at the mall and it, it just kind of, it's more of a throwback. It's a social experience, uh, from a time where, uh, your, your options were more limited. I mean, I, I'm sure there was more people hanging up at the malls, like, just like, we're going to the mall, it's somewhere to go. Uh, as opposed to a, a being a functional, uh, or, 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 or having a reason to go, like, I'm going to the mall because I want to buy something specific. Uh, cause you can do that online now and, and you have been able to for a long time. And, uh, that landscape is, you know, we, we know there's always been, uh, you know, what, like the, the argument, do you go to a brick and mortar store? Do you do it online only? Do you have an omni-channel experience that allows you to do both? So big retailers have tried both of these things and I can make arguments here and there, but for the most part, I'm going to stick to a good online experience. I think that big companies need to really invest more into this technology and, uh, you know, if COVID-19 shows us anything is that a lot of them were not prepared for this sort of activity and they got to get their shit together because that's that's how things are these days uh curbside pickup stuff like that have actually been working pretty well in my opinion uh but there was definitely some hiccups early on uh to be expected i suppose um but yeah I, i'd like to see more of that i don't mind doing a curbside pickup at all uh, especially if it means i can get it faster and i don't have to wait a couple days for a courier to come um, then I'm all, I'm all for it as long as it's organized and uh, and efficient. That's kind of all I'm asking for right now. But on the digital retailing side, it's it's a dirty fucking game, and you have to be aware of that, um, especially on Instagram. So I'm sure we all get that. There's something advertised to you, and before you know it, it's just tracking you, and like it keeps getting advertised to you. If you liked it spe specifically, sometimes I'll like something because I'm interested, but I just don't feel like buying it right now. Uh, and then before I know it, it's like there's so many iterations of that particular product because uh, the reseller um, drop shipping game is getting out of control right now. There's so many people doing it, and it's a very dirty game. For example, yesterday I was looking at, I don't even know, I can't even remember what the hell product was. Uh, and then I was just checking out the comments to see, you know, typically it's a good way to validate it. And all it was was fake accounts with girls with their boobs out or like wearing nothing. Uh, with, with uh, saying, no, you should buy it here. They have better prices and a ex better experience. Like it's all fake accounts with like models as their, uh, as their photo. So it's, uh, yeah, it's super dirty out there and, uh, you have to be aware of what you're buying and getting into it. Uh, I thought about dabbling into some sort of, uh, uh, drop shipping or, or, uh, reseller, um, uh, you know, digital retailing, something like that. But the more I looked into it, it's just, uh, it's such a grind and you have people that do it all day long and are, are, are making these fake accounts and, and putting a lot of effort. It just seems, it seems overbearing to get into something like that, even though there is opportunity. If you're good at it, great. But there's also a lot of snake oil salespeople out there uh, saying, oh yeah, you can make a million in your first year if you just do this and you sign up for my course and all this bullshit, right? So yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Uh, last rant I'm going to go on today is really about uh, misinformation online. So as I'm sure a lot of you have seen this pandemic documentary. Now, I'm not going to watch this just because I think it's going to make me angry. I get the gist of what's going on. I understand that the person that produced this uh, is an anti-vaxxer. So uh, take that for what it is. Uh, vaccines are important. And if you it, honestly, if you if you think opposite, um, it's it's your opinion. Do it how you want. But it's also very dangerous to, to make these claims that uh, this whole pandemic is a hoax and uh you know not listening to the mainstream media i don't listen to the mainstream media anyways and i don't need the mainstream media to tell me what to think i'm gonna look at the facts i'm gonna look at the numbers i'm gonna get various opinions i'm gonna i'm gonna devise my own opinion based on that and that's that i'm not even gonna get any further into it but if you see this piece of shit documentary don't be posting on people's walls saying this is very interesting it's total garbage right um and to give you an example of how bad some of these uh, articles are online, I saw a, 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 a distant cousin or something um, post that uh, Bill Gates created in uh, COVID-19 and was serious about posting this. They got called out pretty quickly. But this is the kind of garbage that you see on social media. If you're not validating, you can go down these horrible rabbit holes and uh, you, you drive yourself insane. Okay. Um, 
Let's look at the facts. Let's look at the data. And then let's not listen to what CNN, Fox News, NBC, I don't know, all these fucking places. They're all trying to make money. And if you don't see that, then maybe you need to reflect more about what you're ingesting on a daily basis. They're all out to make money. And you don't make money by showing videos of puppies all day long. You make money by making people afraid and by forming a consensus and building a following around that consensus. So get that through your head and stop letting them control you. All right? Ah, really heated. Well, happy Friday. That's all my show for today. Remember to subscribe. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think my show's getting a little better. So, uh, you'll, uh, have to hear what I have, uh, or see what I have to say next week. Because it could be anything. I'll probably talk more about killer, or murder hornets. Because those are fucked. Uh, UFOs, space, uh, stuff. You know, tune in. You'll enjoy it.